Welcome to the Real Estate Investing Failures to Fortunes podcast, the show where we fearlessly dive into the untold stories of real estate investors' greatest setbacks and how they turned those failures into resounding successes. I'm your host, Kate Berry, and we're talking with real estate investors across the country to learn exactly how and why they failed and how they took that failure and turned it into a powerful lesson for their business. So come along with me, Kate Berry, on this transformative journey from failure to fortune. I invite you to join our supportive community where together we can inspire, educate, and motivate each other to achieve all of our real estate investing goals. Welcome to the Real Estate Investing Failures to Fortunes podcast. I'm your host, Kate Berry. On this show, we dive deep into the journeys of real estate investors and agents who have experienced failures but are willing to share the lessons learned that help them turn those failures into fortunes. We are thrilled to be here today with our guest, Ron Konigsberg. Ron is a multiple award-winning commercial real estate broker with decades of sales experience who uses warmth, humor, personal stories, and tangible action items to help you build and hone your interpersonal skills. Ron, thank you so much for joining us today. Ah, it's a pleasure to be here, Kate. Thanks for having me. You know, I think nothing really resonates to me more than resilience mm. and overcoming challenges. As a commercial real estate broker, nobody hires me because it's easy to obtain what they want. I am a owner of my own firm. And many times I get transactions that have failed to sell along the way. Mm. I often call myself the relief pitcher because after the starting pitcher has not been able to sell it, I come in the late innings the and closer. overcome. That's right. The closer to overcome all the challenges. And, you know, it's about resilience and it's about overcoming. And as a commercial real estate broker now for 28 years, Overcoming is certainly, I think, if not the most important skill, it's certainly up there. Um, wow. Yeah, yeah. I, that's exactly what we talk about on our show. Overcoming failures, pushing through difficulties, being kind of at the bottom level or going through something where you're like, I can't believe I'm in this position. How do I get through this? That's what our listeners are really here to learn more about. So before we get too far into the failures, give us a little bit of background on yourself. How did you get started into real estate? Sure. I grew up in a home. My dad was a life insurance salesman. He had his my grandfather owned a luncheonette where he did not want to work in that luncheonette. And so he struck out and said, I wouldn't want to be anything but that. And he, be, he started to become a salesperson. And from this modest family, he became very successful in sales. And he did that really and truly by reading books. And as he read a book, he handed it to me. How to win friends and influence people. Read this. Just read it over again. Keep reading it. Keep reading it. How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success by Frank Betka. Read it. Read it. Keep reading it. And I did. And I watched my father's business blossom. And the truth is, is that he taught us these skills. He taught us these salesmanship skills, these interpersonal skills, how to uh, relate to people, how to deal with people, how to have business resilience. And I believe these fundamental basket of skills that he provided for myself and my brother are the skills that made him successful, made my brother hugely successful as a commercial real estate attorney, and has made me commercial broker of the year in my market by many, many different tracking wow. agencies. So yeah, I think it's the interpersonal skills. It's the interpersonal skills. But I think understanding and overcoming failures and the challenges, what it's like to go out and buy real estate, how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of shopping centers and office buildings I've sold, and yet they've all made money. Yes. Amazing. I love that you started out in sales. And I, I think it's a really important thing to highlight for anyone interested in getting into real estate. You know, any job in sales, any type of sales is going to give you skills that will help you be successful in real estate, right? Because I think the highest paid jobs in the world are always going to be commission based. And the best salesmen in the world work in commission-based jobs. So <laughs> if you're listening to this and you want to try to start to get make money, you got to learn sales. 
That's right. So let me frame that for you because I agree with you, Kate. I think that everybody needs to learn sales. What does that mean? 85% of current entrepreneurs and business leaders started their career careers in sales. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now business leaders started in sales. What came first? The ability to sell and these skills or the success, the skill set you know, f came first. Yep. I think that's very, very important to know. It was Dale Carnegie who said 85% of success comes from interpersonal skills. 15% comes from my understanding of commercial real estate. And I do think that's true. So I think anyone who is listening or watching today should know they're looking to buy properties first. You know, I'll tell you, without exception, almost every single property I've ever sold appreciated and owners have been successful. And I can tell you, I'm on the phone all day long. And I mm -hmm. say to them, what is the fear? What is that point of uncomfortableness when you go to buy a property? Because I've been there. Yeah. And overcoming it is closing your eyes and saying, it's going to be a good deal. It's going to be a good deal. It's going to be a good deal. There's got to be a certain amount of faith and of understanding. We, we, if we all had calls, if, or if it was easy, everyone would do this and everyone would be successful at it. And I think a lot of the fear of coming into something like real estate, especially commercial real estate, is there's a lot to learn. There is a huge amount to learn if you're brand new coming into this. And I love that you mentioned Dale Carnegie, you know, his book, How to Win Friends. Win Friends and Influence. And influence people. Yes. Right. I'd love to kind of go back to when you're talking about skill set and sales, mm -hmm. what do you mean specifically, or what skill set in sales do you find to be one of the most important in your work? Right. Listen, I believe that 37% of the gross national product of the United States of America is predicated on sales. That simple. We have four thousand American colleges and universities. So obviously the most important skill set that anyone could possibly teach you is how to sell. Mm -hmm. We have 90 colleges of the 4,000 with one class on how to sell. But wow. yeah, selling is teachable. It's upside down. It's upside down. No one is teaching our students how to public speak. So what mm -hmm. I've done is I wrote a book. It's called Power Broker because if you're successful in commercial real estate, okay. you become a power broker. And it's really how to be successful in business and life. And know oh, that's grandiose. And you know, where do I have the audacity to say, this is what you need to be successful in business and life. And I think that it's because of my brother, I think of my father, my mother, and myself with the intercommunication skills and all these people becoming multimillionaires because of the ability to communicate well. Let's talk about public speaking, okay? Mm -hmm. It's one yeah. of the nine skills. And I'm, I'm gonna focus on, because I think public speaking, and Dale Carnegie literally started out just giving people a moment to speak mm. and move along. Yeah. Speak and move along. And then he wrote a book in 1936. And quite frankly, it's, the skills are all the same. It's just, it, it's difficult to read. I think you'll find mine. Well, I finished it in December of 2023. And it talks about screens and text messages, how far away we're getting from mm. interpersonal skills. Yes. The science is very real. I'll share this with you, Kate, because I think it's so important. Communication is 55387. 55% body language and facial expression as you nod and concur and yes. smile and give me feedback. It's all I need. 38% is tone. Tone. It's important. Tone. Very important very important. And 7% is the message. So, wow. It's I really love that you just broke that down. I think that's such an important thing to highlight right now, especially these days. And what may give you a leg up in sales in any type of industry is having face-to-face -face conversations with people. You know, a lot of right. people 
jump into real estate and just think, okay, I can just text everybody, message everybody, focus 100% on social media, and I can build my business that way. But that's what everyone's doing now. So there's so much white noise and there's no, there's not that connection you feel with people. That's to me, that is one of the most important parts of sales is creating a connection with somebody, a genuine connection. A genuine connection. That's what's important in anything. Yeah. That's what I hear you saying. That to really connect with someone, they need to feel heard. Yes. They right. need to feel connected. And that's what communication is. And the only way that I was a successful salesman, I'm 60, six years ago, my brother said to me, you're not listening. He sat at the dinner table with myself and my dad. He had these interpersonal skills. He didn't become a salesman, but he said to me, life is about to change for you. Mm -hmm. And I said, why? So I'm going to teach you active listening. And I think you're in a position at this point in life to really understand it. And he wow. taught me how the importance of active listening. Mm. If there's one skill set out of the nine, besides public speaking or uh, resilience, they're all important. But I would say number one, the reason why I wrote the book is because he changed my life. He made me understand, you can call it active listening, you can call it exclusive listening, you can call it any kind of listening you want. But I remember what I said to him when he said to me, you're not listening. I said to him, you don't have to try. Your ears are attached. Right. Happening, <laughs> the, the, the listening happens anyway. And he said to me, listening is the most active thing you can possibly do, and it's difficult. First thing I want you to do is put away your distractions. Just, just put away the phone, put away everything else. Yep. And, I, and I'm going to do something because I, this is going to be impossible for you. You're never going to be able to wrap your head around this. Don't interrupt me. Let me finish my thought. Wow. And then he said, if you can, if you can mirror me, if you can just acknowledge what I've said and repeat mm -hmm. it back to me, we will be communicating. Yes. And I started to communicate. That's fantastic. So your brother obviously had this huge impact in your life six years ago. You know, what about the, the 54 years before then? How, tell us a little bit more about your journey from starting into real estate to that moment six years ago. Any any particular failures that come to mind that maybe helped shape who you are today? I think really the thing that has sh shaped me while I have all of my master's from NYU, my CCIM, I every single academic accreditation. The thing that shaped me is one of six people is dyslexic. Mm -hmm. I am one of those six people. I really can't read. I really can't read. Yeah. I just can't read. I read slowly. I don't read so well. I read out loud to myself. But born in 1964, if somebody couldn't read, there wasn't an understanding of dyslexia. I was just stupid. Wow. That must have and been I, such a difficult label to be put on so young. I felt stupid and laughed at, and I couldn't read. Oh, my gosh. No matter what happens, no matter how many a master's degrees that I get, or no matter what happens in this life, I will be forever changed because I'm dyslexic. Mm -hmm. And I think for the better. And I love that. Tell, tell me a better. little bit more. How has that given you? Just tell me a little bit more about that. I want to hear sure. your story. Okay. It's made me focus on the most important skill set. I didn't know that interpersonal skills were the most important skill set. Being dyslexic and being I'm not labeled or feeling or, you know, yeah. scoring categorized, poorly, categorized, box. or I was scoring poorly. I never felt stupid, but I scored poorly. I, I did everything to qualify as not smart. <laughs> okay, yeah, right? I did. I did everything to qualify as not smart. So if anybody is out there who doesn't feel smart, I had a learning disability. Okay. Now you might say he's a smart guy. It doesn't matter. 
listen, we're all smart enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. All smart enough. And there's workarounds, audio books, you know, really helped me. Uh, It was books on tape early on. Yeah. Books on tape early on for me. I found books on tape and I just played them over and over again. But more importantly, the failure was me. Mm. I was the dummy. Okay. No skills. However, it forced me, forced me to focus on interpersonal skills. And that's the 85%. And that's the reason why I am so passionate about sharing these skills with other people. They didn't come naturally to me, but by default, I had to focus on them because I couldn't read that well. I think my interpersonal skills by default became much, much stronger. Mm. I needed to rely on something. Right. And so many times when you're talking with potential customers or clients or partners, it's not like you're reading together, you know, it's not like you have to prove, you don't have to take a test. <laughs> There's no, There's no the exam real world, right? This There's is no... the real world. Yes. So right. I want to challenge everybody out there. Okay. Anyone listening, do you have a work associate? Do you have a wife? Do you have a husband? Do you have children? Are you listening? Are Mm. you putting away for 30 days? Put away your distractions, okay? Don't interrupt. Try to mirror them. Try to repeat back what they say and watch your relationships flourish. Now you got happy people all around you because they feel heard. And that was the key component of what my brother said when it comes to active listening. People just want to be heard. Oprah Winfrey. She interviewed Mm -hmm. 37,000 of the most successful people ever. I was pretty high honor to be interviewed by Oprah Winfrey. 2020, they said to her, after 37,000 interviews this late in your career, what message can you share with us? And that's exactly what she said. Everybody wants to be seen and everybody wants to be heard. Let's just go ahead and do that. Right. So simple, isn't it? (laughs) <laughs> no right no it isn't it isn't you know we have a lot of thoughts running through our head and we're getting away from this interpersonal communication very very quickly technology yeah. has its benefits and you know and technology has its challenges 78 mm-hmm. percent of consumers wish that they could text rather than call Yes. Okay. 76%, more than three quarters of Mm -hmm. Gen Z, 1990 through 2010, say that they get phone anxiety should they have to make a phone call. Whoa. Yeah. And I think most people I know don't even ever have their ringer on, you know? Okay. So they don't even have their ringer on. So now we're talking about a communication where we're interpersonal. We need to develop and hone these skills. The first thing we need to do is make people aware of the fact that these skills are important. There's a resource yeah. out there. My particular book, Dale Carnegie's book, Frank Bedke's book, How I Raised Myself from Failure to Success in Selling. More importantly to know, while this is a real estate podcast, and we can talk about pod- and we can talk about interest rates and sure. we can talk about cap rates. I want everybody to know that the importance of the interpersonal skills and how much they've affected me. Yes. I I love talking about this topic. You know, sometimes we do get into deep specific deals and we're talking about certain markets and certain economies, but there's fundamentals as well in sales and real estate. I would love to hear, because I think sometimes people think commercial real estate is all numbers and spreadsheets and you just plug and play. And if the numbers work, you got a deal, right? How does interpersonal skills come into play as a commercial real estate broker? Right. So I think the perspective is that when you're showing homes, it's interpersonal. And when you're selling a shopping center, there's a you know, an income and expenses and a net operating income and a cap rate. And if the numbers work out, there's always more to it than that. There's always more to it is I think there's upside in the rents. I think that there are traffic counts. There's parking. There's everything, no matter what, is a relationship. 
It's a relationship. It's a perception that when I get a listing from Ron Koningsberg at American Investment Properties, first off, I know that guy. When he sends an offering, usually, if not always, everything's correct. That's the first hurdle to jump through. The pictures are good. He's reachable. I can speak to him if I have questions. He's knowledgeable. Mm -hmm. So these are things that build a relationship, consistency. And more importantly, if someone said to me, what's the most important thing? I think it's touching base with people. Mm. Yes. You know, Kate, what's next for you in commercial real estate? I know you're active. You're looking to buy properties. Any thoughts in selling that, you you know, any of your buildings? Let's talk about valuations. Let's meet. Let's understand. And I'm touching base. I'm top of mind. Yes. Is there a certain, is there a certain percentage of the pie that could come from social media? Yes. Well, I don't know anybody who's, ever said or has ever been on my radar who I admire who did it all through social media. Now it's always been a piece of their puzzle, but not enough. Honestly, at this point in my life, not enough to move the meter. I agree. I agree so much. I think it's a great supplement to, and it's a way to stay top of mind with those that you've already started genuine connections with people that want to follow you because they like you, they see what's going on, but you've got to give them substance, you know, not just uh, memes or quick pictures or follow me here. You know, they want substance. They want something that they can't get from somebody else. And I think if you've got to integrate the in-person and the personal touch, This podcast is for real estate owners, and I'm a real estate broker. I have my master's degree. I have my CCIM. I I have almost every single designation that's possible to happen. I make more phone calls at age 60 than I know anyone else. However, once a week or twice a week, I get a phone call on my cell phone. Hi, Ron. I got this one particular guy in mind. He says, what do you got that you really like? What are you working on that's really stands out that's good? You know, what do you really like and why? It's fun for me. I got a shopping center right now I'm in love with. Market is slow. Interest rates are high. I think this shopping center is on the corner of Main Street and Main Street. Traffic counts are 60,000 in one direction and 19,000 on the other. And it's got great parking and it's at a light. And this light is so long. It's so long because they're so busy this corner. So I say this to this guy and he's out there 10 minutes later. So what did he do? He built a relationship with me over time and Some of these people I've sold shopping centers, that particular individual, I sold 11 billion buildings to. However, right. However, there's many people that call me and what do you like? Hmm. You know, first off, makes me feel good. Yeah. Because now you get to talk about something that you enjoy talking about. That's right. (laughs) Right. right. Why do you like it? Why do you like it? So any owner out there that wants to acquire properties, use real estate brokers as a resource. Determine who style or personality or education or background that you like and touch base with them. I know it's been a month. I know it's been a month we haven't spoken. What are you working on? What are you seeing? Where are cap rates going? What banks are lending? In America, we are taught how to answer questions. Raise your hand and answer Mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. Part of my book is about asking questions. I think that's really, really good. I love that question. What do you like right now? Because, you know, a lot of what we do in sales is very psychology based, right? And if you want someone to answer the phone when you call, you want to kind of establish a pattern of when you call, you're going to ask them a question or say something that makes them feel good, right? And Well, yeah. I want to bring value. I want yeah, to bring right. value. The first thing I want to do is I want to better understand what their challenges are. And then I want to help them overcome these challenges. So people out there right now, they're listening and they're saying interest rates are high. 
Yeah. Lenders are not really aggressively lending. We no, understand that. It's pretty tight. <laughs> and deals, at least at my market here in the New York tri-state area, particularly my markets now, so Suffolk and Queens, I call them upside down. Mm. Cap rate is six and a half and the lending rates are seven, seven and a half. Yeah. So how do you make it work? 28 years of doing this and... I can tell you with the stock market and all time highs and interest rates also at 10 year highs, mm -hmm. things are going to change. I promise you that change is going to land in commercial real estate. Mm. And why do I believe that? When interest rates start to come down and the stock market still remains at all time highs, money will chase commercial real estate assets. And why do you think? commercial specifically and not residential? Oh, I'm sure it, it might be residential. It's a marketplace I don't know as well. I spend my days and my nights and my weekends and all my time thinking and working in commercial real estate. I don't know as much about homes. Hmm. I imagine that it's going to be very similar for residential real estate brokers. When rates come down, people are going to say, wow, okay, I can borrow money and I can acquire or, you know, no, I think residential real estate usually goes hand in hand, nice. but I spend most of my days and nights figuring out that net operating income and making it work with yes. bank lending rates. But more importantly, yeah, if there's anyone out there, I want to let you know that I've, I've overcome dyslexia in 2017 at a 63,000 thousand brokers. I came in number one. Wow. Uh, whoa. In that same year, my wife walked over to me and said to me, our marriage isn't working. I went oh through a divorce. God. So high to the low, to the resilience, to she's one of my best friends right now. We are divorced. We have two kids together. She's a great mom. I only say that because, wow, everything started to come apart. When my marriage came apart, we, Kate, Everybody listening, we're going to face challenges with resilience. Yes. We are going to overcome, and we never know when the next one's coming. My attitude is, I believe the importance of human connections, the ability to overcome things is in large part your support system, mm -hmm. the people around you. Okay. So again, my message to everybody is people are the important component of this whole thing. Treat others well, listen well, work on your interpersonal skills and really care. Yeah. Coming from a commercial real estate broker, go figure, huh? Right. Well, I think that's why it's so brilliant, you know, and truthfully, I'm in commercial real estate myself. And I think the relationships that you build in, in the commercial space they do take a qu quite a bit more time, I think, to become established as an, and a, if you're new, kind of breaking into commercial, it does take a lot of time because, you know, you have to show your value. You have to show that you're committed, that you can bring things to the table. But if you work on those relationships, you, I think you do kind of hit a point when a tipping point where then suddenly everything becomes easy. People are calling you. They're giving, bringing you the deals instead of you're chasing the deals, it, but it takes a lot of work and effort. So if you were to, if you were to talk to someone right now, who's like, I want to get into commercial real estate. What's the first step? What should I do? Who should I be talking to? You know, I just recently read a book that I can't recommend enough and it's uh, who not how. Oh, well, I love that book. I Why? Once every six months. Why? Love, because it changed my mind in terms of what is possible. I realized anything I want to do is possible if I have Why? the right connections to the right people. And you start putting the right people in the right places. And suddenly I can do anything, it feels like. Okay. So it's the who, not the what. You don't have to do it all on your own. No. And that's the beauty. When people come to work here at my firm, the who is them and the who is me. And mm -hmm. the interpersonal skills are us caring about each other and us understanding that we need to work cohesively together. To Now, when you walk in day one 
and someone says to you, I'd like you to buy an asset, it's $3,250,000. I don't know anything. Like, how do those equate? It's $3,250,000. I want you to buy it from me. And I don't know. My first day, I don't know anything. How does that mm -hmm. equate? Well, there's a we. The guy over here is 60. He sold as, as many as anybody else in this entire market. He's a well-known name and we're a team. So I am going to be here. I am going to have those interpersonal skills. I'm going to listen and I'm going to share information with Ron and we're going to work as a team. Yep. So it's the who, not the how. Yes. Because it's overwhelming on day one to say, yeah, but the deal's upside down. Cap rates are low. Interest rates are high. Banks aren't lending. Tell me about the environmental problems. Woo! Is there a phase one? Is there a phase two? What about the engineering? It's like, whoa, 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 whoa. I got a guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> okay. This guy. I got a guy. <laughs> that guy. Okay. I'm going to pass you along to him. And so we're going to work as a team. So while I have one hour's worth of, I can be a value. Yep. I can be a value because we're going to work as a team. So who, not how, active listening is important. I think it's understanding that you make this podcast. Do you get nervous before it, Kate? Do you get Not nervous? Anymore. Not no, anymore. No, definitely before my first one. Oh my gosh, I was very, very nervous. You were nervous. Um, yeah, I'm a big believer in you've got to exercise your muscles. And the more you do something, the easier it becomes. And then you can lift okay. more and do more. And you become more efficient as you do it. So it's the first couple of times, of course, they're hard and terrifying, but it becomes exponentially easier the more you do it. All right. Let's talk about public speaking. Obviously, that's one of my nine skills. And I like to mention it because in this overcoming world, there is a huge one in public speaking. It's called glossophobia, the fear mm -hmm. of public speaking. Now, we've all heard people are more fearful of public speaking than they are of death. Yes. How could that possibly I be though? Wild. Well, it is, here is why. Glostophobia is a science. When you Google glostophobia, what you'll find is that people are hardwired to have fear of public speaking because mm -hmm. for many, many thousands of years, they lived in tribes, they lived in communities, and they were fearful that if they spoke and they were ridiculed, or if they said something right. so poorly, they would be ostracized from the tribe and literally left to fend for right. themselves. Right. So there's this built-in fear that we need to overcome and why this isn't taught in school, I don't know. However, I will tell you that we cover this in my book, Lostophobia. There are these hidden challenges. And mm -hmm. I agree with you that you did practice, Kate, and you did overcome it. Had you stopped for a while, you might feel nervous again. I know I do. Real I, human I stuff. even had that moment five minutes before, like, oh, I'm going to call the whole thing, cancel it. I can't do this, you know, just stop all of this because it's too scary. And what if I fail? And what if it's horrible or nobody listens to it? And it's like when you're diving off the diving board, the fear is right up to that heart when you jump, but then you jump and you're in the air. There's nothing else you can do. Like once you start recording, it's happening. So. That's right. That's right. That's, <laughs> which really brings away. me to another one of my nine skill sets. That's enthusiasm. It's contagious. And it it is. can overcome fear. Enthusiasm yep. is real passion. It's excitement, enthusiasm, and it can replace fear. Enthusiasm can give you courage. So these bucket of skills, these nine bucket of skills, I am going to spend a portion of my life, you know, teaching Drew and Chase, my two sons. They're while I'm sixty, I do have a ten and eleven year old, a fourth grader and a sixth grader. Aww. I know. Yeah, later in life, I had uh, a fortune of these great kids. So yes, this book, you know, it's for everybody. But I, I had Drew and Chase in mind. I want them to understand. I you know understand these skill sets because I do believe. They are what makes you successful, 85% of it, not everything. Yes.
Absolutely. I love that. So Ron, thank you so much for coming on our show today. And this will be in our show notes, but please let us know how can our listeners find out more about you and where can they find your book? Amazon. So far, I self-published Ron Koningsberg, ronkoningsberg.com. Hopefully you'll be able to spell that or it shows that I see on the screen. Yes. Ronkoningsberg.com. <laughs> you, you show it up, show it us to oh, us. Sure. Yeah, I'm real proud of this. Uh, power broker, how to be successful in business and life. And it's really okay. chasing your goals. And I'm a goal setter, you know, and if you want to be happy, set a goal. Make them smart goals, you know, specific, measurable, obtainable, relevant, and timely. Focus on it into humans, interpersonal skills. Realize the most important thing is the person across from you. And it's the who so much yeah. more than, you know. You yes, know, I think what. the best piece of advice that you gave is that you can start it. You can start it right now with a person that's in your life. It can be anyone. It can be your wife, your partner, your kids business partner, someone at maybe even just someone at the cafe, you know, <laughs> going to get your morning coffee, ask the barista how they're doing and really start practicing that act of listening with anyone and everyone. So everyone listening can start doing this right now. And you're going to be improving your skills. That Three words. People. Tell me more. Tell me more. Tell yes. me more, Kate. That's fantastic. Well, thank you, Ron, so much for coming on our show today. It it's was a to pleasure having you. you. Thank I you. And to, to our listeners, this is the Failures to Fortunes podcast, and I'm your host, Kate Berry, and we will see you next time. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Real Estate Investing Failures to Fortunes podcast. If you enjoyed today's stories and insights, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Your feedback means the world to us. Remember, your journey in real estate is a marathon, not a sprint. Embrace the failures, learn from them, and turn them into your stepping stones to success. I'm Kate Berry, and until next time, keep hustling, stay inspired, and keep turning those failures into fortunes. Happy investing.